everyone, and welcome to another edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We have a great show for you today. We are going to start uh, with some continued thoughts about the Super League that I talked about yesterday. We'll go over what that idea is, and I have some thoughts that kind of came to me after the show yesterday that I want to get out there into the world, and then we'll do a little bit of a Bama check-in, uh, see how the Kalen DeBoer era is starting. I think it's starting very strongly, but Definitely not Nick Saban's Bama anymore, I can tell you that. And then we have a little bit of update on uh, some betting uh, that has been going on around the 2025 national title game. There is a team in particular that everyone seems to be riding. And then we will finish it off with some spring game previews. There are a couple of games tomorrow that everyone is going to want to definitely tune into. So I break them down for you today. But before we jump in, I do want to remind you all we get tons of questions and comments throughout the show. And the best way for you all to get your questions on the screen and we can have a fun back and forth here. You can bring up something that maybe I had overlooked. Um, You can use the tip and donation link at the bottom of the screen gsmcpodcast.net it's a huge help not only to us here at the network but to you all you get to watch the show and have kind of a fun interactive experience here but let's jump right in uh let's talk about this super league that we talked about yesterday a little bit kind of broke down the idea and who it was coming from but I had some ideas or I had some thoughts really that popped up after the show yesterday because everything was very new last morning so um was trying to piece together my ideas, and uh, I think I have a more um, cohesive argument against it today. But uh, before we jump into uh, why I think, first of all, I don't love this idea, and second of all, I don't think it's going to work, at least in the short term, let's just go over the idea again real quickly. Um, So College Sports Tomorrow, CST, as you'll hear them uh, kind of referred to in a lot of articles and tweets and things of that nature, have proposed an idea for an 80-team Super League. Uh, This 80-team Super League would essentially be a governing body over college football. It would be able to regulate things like NIL and the transfer portal, two things that everyone wants regulated, right? Everyone wants uh, an answer to those two big problems, so I think that's something that is definitely working in their favor. Um, So 70 of those 80 teams that we just talked about will be the Power 5 teams plus Notre Dame and SMU, who is now Power 5 anyway, so they're included in the Power 5 schools, but Notre Dame along with those Power 5 teams from this next year, those teams are entirely safe. Year in, year out, they have no pressure to be kicked out of the Super League in any way, so they really don't have any reason uh, to worry about that. And compensation for these teams, these 70 teams, or these 80 teams, uh, in fact, will be very depending on uh, the brand power of the school. It'll School by school basis will be the, the way that they worry about compensation there. The 10 teams that are not safe of the 80 are a group of um, group of five teams and others that have that will work in kind of a promotion relegation type model. So there's about I think about 50 plus schools that are on the outside of this 70 team safe area looking in, um, and they will compete to be in that last 10 team uh, group. So I'm not exactly sure how promotion and relegation will work, how many teams will get promoted and relegated every year, but it looks like that is what's going to happen. And uh, it's kind of like in English soccer leagues, uh, if you're familiar with the Premier League and their subsidiaries, there are tons of promotion and relegation, and that's a really fun idea. I just don't love um, that it's only happening in one part of the country or for certain teams, but these 80 teams will be split into 10 team divisions. The winners of those divisions and uh, the next eight highest records will move on to the playoffs. So a 16 team playoff in this uh, format, this would get rid of the playoff committee, which is something that I would technically back, but I'll get to why I don't necessarily think this is the best way to go about it. Um, They have made a proposal to the ACC, which makes sense because the ACC is the conference that everyone is kind of uh, dubbing as the next one to get taken advantage of in all of this. But um, they, but the SEC, the Big Ten, and the Big Twelve have all canceled their meetings with this entity. So uh, ESPN and Fox are really the ones that they're going to need on board if they want this thing to be the future of the sport. But 
I gave you an idea of kind of what I thought briefly yesterday, but I kind of wanted to go into a little bit more depth as um, my brain was able to kind of wrap my head around this idea a little bit more yesterday and uh, give you a little bit uh, better of a breakdown, I suppose. But let's start with uh, 70 teams being safe is an absolute non-starter for me. Um, I think if you're introducing promotion and relegation into college football, it should be that way for absolutely everyone. There should be no one that's safe, and that sh- I don't think I would ever really waver from that idea. If the top teams are capable, if they you know, are the teams that we think they are, they wouldn't have to worry about relegation anyway. So um, that's one thing that I just don't like. I think uh, college football should never be a place where um, – People are, you know, or teams are segmented uh, in the sense that no one can, there are a group of teams that have absolutely no shot to win a national title. Now, you can make the argument there are a ton of teams in the country that have no shot to win a title, but at the very least, they're, you know, at the table. Um, In this scenario, there would be 70 teams that are at the table every single year, and then a rotating cast of 10 out of about, I think, somewhere around 55 or so um, that would be at the table any given year. So I just don't love that idea. I think that's anti-college football in some ways. Um, And then I am confused as to how they're going to make these divisions up. So to me, it looks like they're going to break it up in terms of difficulty. Uh, So try to power rank these teams and set it up to where the number one team is playing the best team overall from a year ago is playing the second best two seed or however that ends up working out. But I think that's the way that they're going to go about it. But I've seen a couple of people throw out ideas of a possible um, regional, like a, a conference type model for these 10 divisions. And I think there's problems with both of those ideas. So first the kind of merit based, um, making it so every division is as even as possible, I think that's almost impossible in the world of college football just because of the changing nature of the sport. It's always going to have people rolling in and out of it. Teams are going to be changing year over year. So making these eight divisions totally even in terms of difficulty is nearly impossible. And then you add in that they're not going to have a playoff committee or they're not going to have a Uh, formula like a BCS type formula which is what I tend to think they should be doing um, to figure out who the best teams are some teams are going to get left out that are better than teams that get in that's just kind of the nature of the sport that's how conferences have worked for a really long time and that's how this would work and then if you break it up into conferences it's the same problem right it's the problem that we have today the SEC Uh, And Big Ten schools, they play a much tougher schedule than the ACC and the Big 12 schools. It's not that the Big 12 schools and the ACC schools can't have tough schedules, but the difference in the week-to-week grind is pretty stark when you really look at it. So I think this is something that there's almost no way to create a fair and equitable eight divisions where everyone is playing the same difficulty of schedule and we have this ability to say, okay, these are the 16 teams getting in, and no one has a problem with that. Uh, that's just not something that can happen in a sport that has so many teams involved in so much uh, ver- variety. Excuse me, I totally lost the word. Um, has so much variety in the ability of these teams and the talent of these teams. It's impossible to create a t- entirely fair structure in these eight divisions so I think that's another big time problem for me Um, we did just talk about it it is possible they break up into conferences if they have no conferences and there's absolutely no regionality uh, to this that's a total deal breaker for me and I think it's a deal breaker for a lot of you and a lot of college football fans across the country because that's what makes this sport awesome. Um, the ability to wake up one morning and be playing let's say Clemson and you live in Atlanta, Georgia, like I grew up, and you can wake up and look across the street, see a Clemson flag, and they're playing Georgia Tech, and you're a Georgia Tech fan, and that makes you super mad. Part of that is ingrained in college football. That's the whole point of why, you know, conferences are so great, and obviously we have kind of started to lose that as, um, you know, more and more conferences have started to stockpile mainly the SEC and the Big Ten, but the reality is, 
we have to keep it as much as possible. We have to keep this regionality part of the sport as much as we can. If it were up to me, I think we would go back to the Southwest Conference and we would have very regional conferences that, yeah, they might be a little bit uh, different in terms of difficulty, but we would work it out on the back end with some type of BCS model. So um, I'm fully in favor of the regional model. We've obviously gone a little bit away from that in recent years, but I think this would take us entirely away from that, which is something that I don't think anyone wants. And then finally, the one thing about this is you would get a ton of different games that you've never seen before. You would get games that you haven't even dreamed of seeing before. You would get, I don't know, Penn State against Texas Tech. It would just be very, very weird matchups um, pretty much week in, week out. And that's really cool. That's a cool idea to see all these different teams playing each other. I think you would get some very specific offenses, which is really fun, especially from those lower level teams that are trying to make some noise. Maybe they'd run like a little triple option type uh, offense to catch people off guard and maybe make a run in this uh, type model. But the biggest problem with that is you don't have the rivalries. You don't have the history of these matchups. You don't have the pageantry that goes along with it. And that's college football. At the end of the day, college football is rivalries. It is OU Texas being split at the 50-yard line. It is the Iron Bowl on a Saturday being as loud as it can possibly be. It is the game in the big house being just an insane environment from start to finish. All of that stuff is vital to college football. And if you start taking that away, or if you take it away in one fail swoop, you're going to lose a lot of fans very quickly. Um, So I think those are my biggest problems with the actual structure of it. Um, Now let's get to why I'm not super worried about this idea, at least for the time being, um, as we go into this new kind of era of college football. I did mention the SEC, the Big Ten, and the Big 12 canceled meetings. There's a real big reason for that, and the reason is the sport is coming to them. They have really no reason to sit down with much of anyone and uh, settle for anything that keeps um, anyone outside those three, or really SEC and Big Ten more than anyone else, keep anyone else involved. The SEC and the Big Ten are in a position where at some point they could break off and have their own Super League. I know for a fact, actually, that this has been talked about in SEC and Big Ten circles, and it's been talked about a lot. So... At the end of the day, I think um, they're in a position where they pretty much own the sport at this moment, and it keeps coming towards them. They keep getting more power, so why would they sit down with another entity and say, okay, yeah, we'll let everyone back into the uh, party when they control the party right now? Um, And then finally, I think um, this is a really fun idea to talk about. This is something that, um, you know, it's fun to imagine, and maybe I'll take a, a whack at you know putting together eight divisions uh, for you guys over the weekend and come back with my version of what this would look like on Monday or Tuesday, but I think the reality is, if you really want this to happen, ESPN and Fox are the first dominoes to fall. It That's the way it is with pretty much everything in the sport. Nothing gets done in the sport without those two being a big part of it, without those two giving their sign-off, so... You need ESPN and Fox involved. You need them to get their sign off, and that's going to be really tough to do because the media deals they have with these um, conferences right now, mainly the SEC and the Big Ten, are pretty lucrative. So I don't think they're in a position to necessarily jeopardize that for an idea that, in my opinion, seems a little half-baked at this point. So I think there's got to be a ton of funding that goes towards the top dogs, right? Uh, We talked about the SEC and the Big Ten. This is their sport at the time being. So you have to be able to, if you want this to happen, you have to be able to funnel money to those teams like crazy. Do it at a degree that would make everyone else very, very mad. Uh, The same way this playoff agreement did, the same way that a lot of these uh, new things that are happening around the sport have made people really mad. So I think uh, there's a couple of things. Obviously, Fox and ESPN have to be involved. You have to get more money to these SEC and Big Ten teams. And then finally, you have to have a different plan for these divisions. You have to preserve rivalries. You have to find a way to um, create either a entirely even um, division group, which are, is not possible in terms of difficulty through divisions, um, or you have to re-employ the playoff committee which is not necessarily what I would go for I would go for more of a BCS type model to figure out what those eight at-large teams would be because 
there's not a way in the world where whether it's conferences or it's just ranked divisions in terms of uh, difficulty, there's no way you're going to have a total even split in terms of the schedule that people are playing. So I think that's going to be the three biggest things. you got to get um, the TV deals on board because that's the biggest thing and that's going to take a while to do. Uh, the SEC and the Big Ten have to feel like they're still at the head of the table and they are getting the most money. And the plan just has to be tweaked a little bit. I, I think uh, the nuances of this plan just have to be fixed a little bit. So overall, it's a really fun idea. It's it's fun to think about. People will be talking about it very a lot. I'm sure there's a lot of people that really like this idea. I mean, this group has a ton of people that are pretty important in the college football space. So this is not the last time you will hear from CST. This is not the last time I will talk about them, I'm sure. But at the end of the day, there's going to have to be changes and there's going to have to be some big time players that come to the table with this group um, to make this really come to reality. But for the time being, we'll let the chips fall where they may. We'll let things uh, develop and then come back to that. But we're going to take our first break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Bama and a little update on how the DeBoer era is starting. Um, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about Bama, and I can tell you one thing. It is not Saban's Bama anymore, but I will talk about them right when we get back from this. <laughs> 